What's good YouTube? Welcome to Proctor House Rottweilers and today I just wanted to respond to a few comments that you guys have left on my previous videos um, basically answering some of the questions that you guys have and enjoying uh, the last few days that Lexi Von Scotia is going to be here at our kennel because she is sold. So like I said, I'm going to be answering a lot of questions uh, and responding to a few comments that I got previously in old videos. Let's get started. The first question we have coming from Big Bear Rottweiler. Uh, he wants to know if we can do a full detailed video of uh, the import process as well as doing a video uh, pro and con of buying an adult dog to breed over buying a puppy. Um, first question, yes, I will do a fully detailed video. Um, of the import process, the last video I did was something quick. It was more based on uh, my guy Trey's uh, import process that he went through that exact day when he came over to uh, show me the dog and pick up one of his other puppies that he uh, previously sold. Um, and the second pro, the second one was the pro and cons of buying an adult dog over buying a puppy. I personally feel like the biggest pro of buying an adult Rottweiler instead of getting a puppy is going to be how quick you can get a return on your investment if you are planning to breed that dog. And then another benefit of it is that you don't have to worry about going through the process of getting uh, health certificates done and all of that type of stuff. You don't have to worry about doing JLPP, uh, hips, elbows, highs, eyes, and heart because hopefully if you were doing your research and buying an adult dog, you found a dog that had all those clearances done already before they got to your facility or kennel. Um, I feel like that's a major thing that you need to do if you guys are looking to uh, buy an adult dog. Um, another pro would be that you can buy an adult dog pregnant. I feel like that's the easiest way to um, successfully produce a litter um, when you don't have a stud dog you know, in, in your presence or at your kennel. You don't have to go through the process of doing all the progesterone tests, uh, spending all the extra money. Um, trying to confirm, trying to make sure that, that your female it does take and that she's in tip top shape. The previous breeder or whoever you bought the dog from was going to handle all the progesterone tests um, and handle and make sure that the dog was successfully bred. And then for me personally, I would say you need to wait um, until the pregnancy is confirmed by ultrasound or x ray, whatever the breeder likes to do. Um, but make sure the pregnancy is confirmed uh, before you receive that dog. Um, I think a con for buying an adult dog is that you don't know the dog and the dog doesn't know you. So with that being said is that let's say you, you buy an adult dog and you don't buy her bread. So at that point you're basically uh, pretty much just going, going off of whatever the previous breeder said, how her heat cycles go, her temperament, which can be complete lies. Um, I know a lot of people who've bought dogs that are adults and they have you know crazy heat cycles or they have split heats and that was the reason that they were sold but the previous breeder uh, didn't want to go into details about that obviously he's just trying to make a quick sale um, another thing is that you don't know temperament a lot of people or a lot of breeders who have dogs they keep their dogs as kennel dogs um, for us here you know we let all the dogs socialize as much as possible we do group trainings and everything like that group play dates you know we try to get them socialized as much as possible um, at all life stages. Um, a lot of breeders I know, um, they keep dogs as kennel called, kennel dogs, excuse me. Uh, so basically their dogs just stay in kennels all day. They know no basic obedience, no basic commands. All they know how to do is go after a ball and chase a ball and have a ball drive. Yes, that looks good on videos when you're trying to sell a dog, but that's bad when you have a dog in your kennel and you're trying to socialize it or you know introduce it to your yard and if they have, you know, bad habits, bad tendencies, bad traits, uh, show signs of aggression towards adult dogs, puppies, kids, even you. Those are a lot of things that you have to, uh, that you take a risk in as far as, uh, you know, getting an adult dog over getting a puppy. Uh, let's go over to pros and cons of getting a puppy. Uh, I think one of the biggest pros is that you get to watch that puppy develop. You learn its tendencies, you learn its traits. Obviously, you can get into training at a very young age, whether you want to do uh, protection or show, you can get all that stuff handled and you will be, you know, the dog's handler, so they trust you completely. Um, another thing is that, like I said, you get to socialize this dog around your family. It gets to really learn you and, and its environment and, and what the day-to-day -day process goes on your yard or kennel. I think that's a major pro, a major plus. But yeah, I think the biggest con of getting a puppy is going to be, if you want to use it for breeding, is that you can spend, let's say, $5,000 or $6,000 on an input puppy, like I've done before. Um, 
and you raise that puppy as, as best as you could, the best of your knowledge, but the puppy still ends up not passing its health test. That would be, the puppy can have JLPP, the puppy can have bad hips or bad elbows. That's a lot of stuff that you don't know until they become of age uh, that they can actually be tested. But yeah, I think that would be the biggest con is if you're investing in a dog that you want to breed and the dog fails and you just put a, a time you know, whole year or two, because you you can't get uh, the official OFAs until you know 24 months old on your adult dogs for hips and elbows. So most people wait for those and they don't do prelims. So I think that's the biggest con is that you waste your money on a dog if you got that dog for breeding purposes and show purposes. If you wanted a family pet, uh, I believe that's still another big con uh, because now you have to pay a whole lot of money for vet bills and all of that stuff. But it's not going to do that much of a hit to you if you don't have any plans on breeding or showing. The next question is gonna be from Nevitz Kratz. Uh, he's asking, what type of dog beds did I end up getting? I just did a video uh, on this previously. Uh, the type of dog beds that I recommend would be Corunda, Corunda, it's one of those names. Uh, but I'll send, you know, I'll post up a picture of those beds and the link somewhere here. Um, but yeah, so that's the beds that I went with. I think they're the best quality bed that I've tried so far. And they're, they're, they're kind of pricey, but they're worth the investment. Uh, if you guys have a kennel set up and you do have your dogs outside that like to dig and anything like that, those beds will, you know, uphold and be able to take the damage uh, that the other cheap beds that I got on Amazon did not. All right, so next question we got is from Josh Andretta. Uh, he said he has a female AKC registered Rottweiler. Uh, Warner, maybe if I can look at his pedigree through email, text, and see if I recognize any dogs in her pedigree. Um, so basically with this question right here, I'll say that typically I really don't care much about checking out pedigrees unless I am uh, looking for something new to add to my yard or to my breeding program um, or looking for, a, you know, a stud dog or something like that. That's when I'm usually interested in checking out pedigrees uh, a lot. Back in the day, I used to study pedigrees like all day. Now I'm more so kind of drained and I know what type of lines I'm usually looking for. Um, but sure, go ahead and send me that, you know, the picture to my, to my, uh, to Instagram or Facebook, you know, at Proctor House Rottweilers. Let me know that you're commenting in response to the video that I just dropped, you know, answering two questions. Um, and I'll definitely check out, you know, your dog's pedigree to see if I recognize any names in there. So this next question is from a subscriber. Uh, their name is Zulu Prime. They want to know why I stopped using Victor Dog Food. A uh, short answer is because it made my dog's coat change and it started to look rough and a little dingy. And uh, the only thing that I had changed in my dog's uh, daily lifestyle was going to be the dog food. And that's when I switched to Victor. So basically what I did is I canceled out Victor, switched over to Loyal Life, and everything went back to normal. And my dogs have nice, shiny coats. And now they're actually happy. So that is why I changed. So the last question I'm going to answer is from a subscriber named Ian K. He wants to know what fly ears look like. He says he can look at them, but he can't find anything other than uh, actual flies biting on dog's ears. Uh, I will post a few pictures of what fly ears look like, and you will see exactly why I take my dog's ear, because I personally don't like fly ears at all. I feel like fly ears can make or break a dog or a puppy. But yeah, I appreciate you guys leaving the comments and asking questions on my videos. Continue to do that. I will be doing more videos like this. I might even start doing live videos uh, Answering questions that way as well But here goes our girl Lexi like I said in the beginning of the video that sh this is her last weekend here She's actually going back to her breeder. I decided to sell her uh, after she didn't take with I pose and then you know I got my my younger female pups here that are always trying to uh, Prove that they're going to be the dominant one. Lexi doesn't like that so I felt like, you know, with her coming up on, you know, the age of six um, and her missing her previous heat, I felt like it was only right for me to let her go to a home um, where she can basically retire. So she is going back to her original breeder out all the way in Kentucky. This is her. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Also wanted to give you guys a quick update on my boy Simba. He is now 13 months old. We have successfully completed his prelims through FCI, JLPP negative. As of now, his hips and elbows look great. 
Um, so we are going to open him up for stud services uh, to local, only in Arizona, because we're only going to be doing live breedings right now with him um, until we get a couple breedings under him. Make sure he is a proven stud before we start shooting out semen of him and stuff like that. But yeah, so he is available for stud. Message us today. Get on the early deal that I have going for him. We out.